Welcome or welcome back to Watts the Obsession, covering the Delphi case in this video asking the question, what was, if there was any, the connection between Richard Allen and Keegan Klein? In the last video, we discussed recent events of the prosecutor's office dropping five counts against Keegan Klein, who's been held in jail since 2020 for charges of child pornography and exploitation. These charges were related to his creation of the Anthony Schatz profile that was catfishing, looking for young girls to talk with him or meet with him in person. That is, if Keegan Klein was the only person using this profile. That's one of the big questions currently at hand. We do know that whoever was behind the Anthony Schatz profile at the time talked to Liberty German on the day she and Abigail Williams went for a hike on the Monon High Bridge Trail in Delphi, Indiana. The Anthony Schatz profile was one of the last persons to talk to either one of the girls before they went missing and were later found to have been horrifically murdered. After it was announced that Richard Allen was arrested on October 28, 2022, and that following Monday it was announced that he was taken up on two charges of murder for the murder of Abigail Williams and Liberty German, people have been looking to see if there is indeed a connection between Richard Allen currently in prison and Keegan Klein who's been in prison since 2020. Keegan Klein is being held on $265,000 bail bond and Richard Allen is being held with no bail bond available. It was learned that the connection of the Delphi murders to the Anthony Schatz fake social media profile started with another incident that was reported to police that happened just days after the bodies of Liberty German and Abby Williams were discovered in February of 2017. Police questioned Keegan Klein about the incident during an August 19, 2020 interview at the Indiana State Police Post in Purdue, Indiana. In the police interview transcript obtained by the Murder Sheet podcast, it says that police questioned Klein in that interview about the other school-age girl that gave her address to Anthony Schatz just days after the Delphi murders. Klein knew the girl's family from Galveston, Indiana. The police investigator told Klein she comes from homeschool, sees the guy with a ski mask looking in her bedroom window directly after giving this address to Anthony Schatz. As a matter of fact, that's the incidents that started everything else last time. That's how everything started last time was that incident. To that statement, Klein replied, that's crazy. Police told Klein that he searched online for information about the family on February 19th, 2017, the day before the incident with the other girl and a few days after the murders of Abby and Libby. So this incident appears to be the first suspicious connection police had to the Anthony Schatz profile, which eventually led them to Klein. The person behind the Anthony Schatz profile was one of the last to communicate with Libby German before her. So the timeline goes like this. On February 14th, 2017, the bodies of Libby German and Abigail Williams were discovered near the High Monon Bridge Trail in Delphi, Indiana. On February 20th, 2017, a school age girl in Galveston in Cass County, Indiana had given her address to Anthony Schatz. A day later, she saw a man in a ski mask looking in her bedroom window as she got off the school bus. On February 25th, 2017, police raided the home in Peru in Miami County, Indiana, where Klein lived with his father. They found over 100 photos and videos of underage girls on several electronic devices. In the 2020 interview, police questioned Klein intensely about anyone else who may have had access to his devices. An investigator told Klein, quote, I can honestly sit here and I'm telling you that I did not believe that you killed Libby, end quote. Police told Klein that they believe a second person was communicating 
with girls using his devices. They asked Klein repeatedly whether his father knew his passcodes. Quote, I wouldn't let my dad have my phone for long periods of time or nothing like that, end quote. That's from Klein. Klein's father, Jeremy Anthony Klein, also known as Tony, has a criminal history that includes convictions of sexual harassment, battery, and theft. As it turns out, to this date, there never was a connection made between Klein's father, Tony, and Keegan Klein's electronic devices or the possibility of Tony also using the Anthony Schatz social media profile or other profiles that may have existed that were catfishing profiles. Now, although you hear three counties mentioned here, Carroll County, where Delphi, Indiana is located, Cass County, and Miami County, keep in mind that these counties are all very close together. So what makes people think that Keegan Klein might be connected to Richard Allen or anyone else at all through the catfishing accounts like Anthony Schatz that he created? Well, there's this. On page 52 in the transcript that Murder Sheets obtained from 2020, an investigator says to Klein, Bud, from your Dropbox account off your phone, we have started one of the largest child pornography investigations ever undertaken in the state of Indiana. So surrounding this statement from the investigators, they're pressing Klein to tell them who else has access to that account, and he doesn't really cop much. There is a name, and it's redacted, and I'm not even really clear if the person that is being referred to in the redacted name is a male or a female. At some point, Klein says that his girlfriend had access to his account, or she knew the password. He says, I mean, she knows my password and stuff. But then the investigator says, okay, 2016 to know who, what's his name? So none of this is clear at all. He talks about somebody that he lived with in Vegas for a short time that may have had access to his accounts or may have known his passwords. But all of this in the transcript leaves a whole lot to be questioned. So what I find to be important about this interview or interrogation with Keegan Klein from 2020 is investigators are really going at the possibility of Keegan Klein sharing information with others or other people having the password to access whatever's on his electronic devices. They're not talking about necessarily just what he searched and saved and had in his own, you know, personal portfolio or even you know, business that he was diving into on the dark web. The question is really around content, illegal content of the nature that I discussed that he might be sharing with other people. So this just gives you the impression that they're not just going after the greatest charges that they possibly can with Keegan Klein, but they are going after finding information that's going to implicate people that are connected to him. So the question exists, if investigators were looking for another person or other persons connected to the Anthony Schatz profile, possibly directed towards finding suspects or, you know, the person who committed the Delphi murders, what are they doing here? Well, the only person that they really go after by name is his father, Tony. And as I said earlier in this video, Tony has yet to be brought up on any charges connected to anything that investigators are questioning Keegan Klein about to date. So it's a known fact that Keegan Klein and his father, although they both have sordid pasts, are relatively close. So by going so hard after Tony or in questioning Keegan Klein so intensely about Tony, were they trying to cause him you know, anxiety to create some tension, to create some worry in Keegan Klein's mind that his father may be arrested on some charges that, you know, were not appropriate for him, uh, for crimes that he didn't commit, in order for Keegan Klein to flip on somebody else who investigators 
had a suspicion maybe who they're going after, although obviously they didn't know the exact identity of that person. Does that make sense? Now it does seem that all along, or at least since the 2020 interview of Keegan Klein, investigators had an idea that the person who killed Abby and Libby must have been connected to the Anthony Schatz fake social media profile. So this is where, in my opinion, the investigation or the questioning of Keegan Klein gets kind of interesting. While investigators are asking Klein who may have had access to any number of his electronic devices, he, you know, gives them a little bit of information. He talks about the person he was in with Vegas, did a lot of drugs with, about, you know, no, it definitely wasn't my dad. But when they start to ask him specifically about who may have had access to the Anthony Schatz profile, he shuts it down really quick. He says nobody, nobody had access. And he will not go any further than that, no matter how hard it seems investigators try to question him about an alternate user for the Anthony Schatz profile. So what does this mean? Does it mean that they were getting too close to the critical question and Keegan Klein just shut it down knowing what was at stake or what was at stake? Was it Richard Allen who was the person who appeared in the window of the young girl after she got off the bus? a few days after the murders of Abby and Libby, and what other connections can we make between Richard Allen and Keegan Klein? Look for the next video in this series exploring the possible connections between Richard Allen and Keegan Klein. Justice for Abby and Libby. If you like this video, please remember to click like and subscribe and thank you so much for watching.